Hey guys, I'm here today a little bit late to talk about the books I read in January. So I completed 11 books in January and really had a great reading month. I took so much joy in reading that amount. Previous to that, for the last sort of year, year and a half, I've been reading a lot less than that and really been feeling the loss of spending more time reading and so I just enjoyed it so much in January and I really hope it continues in the coming months. At the moment I feel just as compelled to keep picking up books and sort of consistently um, completing them so fingers crossed it lasts. So I have a stack here to talk about. I'm going to start with the one stars and work my way up to the five stars but like there's a big chunk of um, three star books in the middle and I don't know which one I prefer like I haven't worked out to that level of detail but you guys would get the drift. So I did actually have a one star book this month, which happens very rarely because usually if a book's one star, I DNF it. What I've decided to do is to um, save my DNFs until each quarter and then do a video about them because I don't want to spend time talking about them in these wrap ups because there's just too many books to get through. Um, but I also find it interesting to hear people talk about DNF. So I thought I'd sort of put them in a little collected video each quarter. So I did DNF three books in January. So you'll see that then. So the one star book, um, the reason I finished it was because it was quite an easy read and I was hopeful that it would be more than one star for um, the majority of the reading experience. And that was Amatka by Karen Tidbeck. It has a bit of fluff on it. So I gave my um, patrons three books to choose between. They were all sort of like dystopian sci-fi books and this is the one they voted for. Uh, I felt quite bad because I didn't enjoy it although so basically I do a reading vlog based on the book that wins and so I did a reading vlog of this one which is now uploaded so um, if you guys are my patrons you can go and watch it. Um, but you know I always find it interesting watching people do reading vlogs of books they don't enjoy just as much as I do of reading vlogs of books that people do enjoy so um, hopefully that was still worth watching. So yeah this was a letdown. This is a cool sci-fi concept in this weird sort of dystopian world but it completely lacks any character development. It's the writing style is nothing special, it's so fast, it's ridiculous, character motivations are completely unexplained, there's a massive um, insta love in it, like the worst I've ever seen in a book, and then at the end of the book it gets really batshit crazy and you think you're led to believe you're going to get loads of like history and explanations at the end and you don't. So it was just a bit of a mess of a book and yeah, gave it one star unfortunately. So I didn't give any books two stars, so that's pretty good. So the next book I'm going to talk about, I haven't actually given this a rating because I don't rate poetry generally, just because I don't really feel confident rating poetry, but I did really enjoy this one and would recommend it, and that's Common Ancestor by Jenny Irish. Um, I'm not really going to say much about this here, except to say that I think it is really beautifully written, um, and the majority of these poems are told from the perspective of a young girl called Red Wreck, um, and for the first portion of the um, the collection, um, they're very much focused on commentary of on women's place in society, on class, uh, particularly in the South, and on feminism. And I really enjoyed that. Um, and there's lots of beautiful um, nature writing that's sort of used to discuss those issues. There's lots of things that probably went way over my head, but I can see that this is beautifully written, and I wish I could understand it better than I do. So there's that one. And then one I buddy read with the lovely Ange from Beyond the Pages is A View of the Harbour by Elizabeth Taylor. Um, this is in this rather beautiful edition. And I've just realised I never read the introduction first because it spoils the book. Um, but I forgot to read it after and it's actually introduced by Sarah Waters who's one of my favourite authors. So I should probably go back and read that now I finish the book. Um, so this is the first Elizabeth Taylor I've read and I owned this one for quite a few years so I was really glad to get to it with Ange. And I haven't got a time to say about this one. I really enjoyed doing the buddy read with Ange. Um, I always really love doing um, buddy reads with Ange. It's really nice to check in with her and um, sort of see what we're both thinking. And I think both of us felt uh, quite similarly about this one in that it was a really lovely, cosy story. Um, this is set in this small village um, and this sort of middle to um, elderly aged man arrives to sort of um, do some paintings and initially through his eyes we see these various characters in the village um, and this sort of quiet affair that unfolds. Um, the description of the book makes this sound like it's going to be much more dramatic in scope and it really isn't. Um, it follows a lot of these characters um, who are all quite lonely and sad and isolated um, and just follows them in this sort of almost this street they all live on on the harbour um, street 
and yeah you just follow their lives now i felt that the ending was a bit rushed um and that lessened my enjoyment like this could have tipped towards a four star um but just at the end it just um sort of rushed along to finish itself and that didn't really make much sense to me but this is a really enjoyable read and um like i said a really nice one to buddy read it with Ange. so there's that one and the next one was a bit of a disappointment because I thought I would love this one and I know a lot of you thought I would love this one as well and I put this on my 5 star TBR predictions um, and that is A Line Made by Walking by Sarah Baum. So this is a book that I've owned since it came out and always been convinced that I would completely adore and it would be one of my favourite books and like speak to me deeply and I'd really connect with. Um, and I kept starting it and then stopping because I felt like it was a bit depressing and a bit too close to home and the author, um, the, the narrator, sorry, is very similar to my age and she's sort of unsure what she wants to do with her life and feeling really low and all that just felt a bit too, like, familiar. So I put it off um, and then I felt like I was in a better mental space now than I have been in a long time so I wanted to pick this up and yeah, I just sort of still felt that way. So, in some ways this is beautifully written. Um, an example of that is this. The sound of the only tree I've ever heard falling began with a thunderous crack, the snapping of a monolith. The fall itself was unspectacular in comparison. It sounded like a thousand softer cracks in tuneless concord. There was no rustle and brush of leaves because it was winter and there were no leaves. Because trees know in their heartwood that if they don't surrender their foliage in autumn, high winds will sail them to the ground. They know they must expose their timber bones to increase their chance of remaining upstanding through to another spring. So that is beautiful and that's the exactly like the sort of writing style that I love. But I did feel really low reading this book and I'd put it down um, for a few days and then I'd be like, come on, you need to go back and read another chapter. And then I just feel really low again when I read that other chapter. And I also felt like it didn't really go anywhere. And it's a really hard one for me because I feel like in another book I'd love this author. So she has got another book out which I will of course read. I think I love her writing style, um, all the things she focuses on I really enjoy. But this one just made me feel really low and because it didn't really have like a climax or anything it was driving towards it just felt like this same tone of depression throughout and I didn't feel great reading it. So yeah it's a weird one because so many people said to me honestly like it won't make you feel depressed reading it it's not like that and i guess i just disagree like i guess everyone's mental health is different but this one did make me feel great reading it um so i feel like i would say if you're struggling with your mental health then um this one might make you feel a bit worse because reading about someone who's desperately alone and sad doesn't make me feel any less alone and sad so yeah this one was um, a bit of a letdown for me but i can still see that it's beautifully written so a bit of catch 22. Then another one I read is The Mother of All Questions by Rebecca Solnit. So this is a, a really mixed bag. This is an essay collection and some of these essays are amazing. Like um, these are essays about feminism um, and some of them are amazing and really made me think um, and she really like analyses things and draws lots of um, like contemporary references of things that have been in the media or um, things that have uh, like crimes that have happened and how they've been portrayed. So I loved all that. But you can tell these essays are collected from different sources in the fact that she will use the same examples in like three of the five essays. So she'll keep referencing um, the same um, like criminal case um, again, like it's the first time. So it's quite obvious that these essays weren't written to go in a book together um, because she like acts like she hasn't said it before and you're like, hey, you said that 20 pages ago. So that's a little bit annoying and I feel like I don't know, like when you pull these essays together, perhaps you should add a note about that at the front or you should edit those essays um, and make them um, stand separately in this format a bit better. Um, and I also just felt like some of them weren't as strong as others, like some of them just felt a bit meandering and like they didn't really make a point. So some of these were amazing and some of them not so amazing, but overall um, I really recommend this one and I definitely want to read more of her books in the future. The next one I can't talk about much because this is the second book in a series and that is The Wicked King by Holly Black. So I read The Cruel Prince last year and I had really mixed feelings about it, but overall I found it a really addictive read and I sped through it. Um, and I felt the same way about this one. I actually preferred this one. I think this one's a much stronger novel. So these books are really compulsively readable. Um, if you feel like reading something that's easy and page turning and like doesn't take a lot of thought, these are great for that. 
I, yeah, like I say, I preferred this one. Um, I didn't see where it was going as much and um, I found quite myself quite shocked by the ending, which I appreciated. But I still feel that I don't understand the main character's motivations at all. Um, her reasons for wanting what she wants make no sense. And I just look at her and think, your life would be so much easier if you just weren't making this decision. Like you could just make another decision and everything would be just normal. So, um, and your reasons for the thing you want aren't explained, like they don't make any sense. So yeah, I find that as like the crux of the novel pretty irritating, <laughs> but as an experience, if you ignore that, um, these are quite fun books and I am intrigued to see where it goes. Um, you know, and the thought of having to sort of wait a year before I find out, um, what's gonna happen in the next one is a bit annoying. So I would recommend these books um, and I'm certainly gonna read some more Holly Black books in the future. So I only have one four star book of the month and um, we go straight from um, all those threes to one four and then quite a few fives. Um, and that is Good Morning Midnight by Lily Brooks Dalton. Um, I really enjoyed this one. I'm not gonna talk about it a ton here because I think I'm gonna do a video soon talking about lots of the sort of near future um, sci-fi dystopian books I've read um, because there's quite a few of them I'm planning to read um, or have read recently but what I will say is that this is a really slow moving beautifully written descriptive literary fiction about um, these few people who are surviving the end of the world. So we follow an elderly man who's been left on a remote space station with a young girl and he believes that the rest of the world has um, you know, something bad has happened to them because he's not getting any responses on any radio transmissions he's sending out. And then we're also following a group of astronauts who were sent to Mars or Jupiter, I believe, Jupiter, I think. Um, and they are now coming back into the Earth's range on this long mission and they can't get any response on the radio. And so they think something may have happened to the world. And it's about how these two groups of people deal with that um, and sort of, you know, how they move forward from that. Not much happens. It's really descriptive, it's really slow, there's lots of beautiful descriptions of space and icy landscapes and I really enjoyed it. It's not without its flaws, hence not getting a five stars, um, but if you like slow books then I'd really recommend this one. Okay, now on to the five stars. The first one was a reread and I think I gave this book four stars originally, but I bumped it up this time around and that is The Night Watch by Sarah Waters. Um, so I listened to this on audiobook and I'd highly recommend that route. The audiobook narrator for all of Sarah Waters' books is phenomenal. I think she also narrates The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry, so I'm just so excited to um, listen to more books that she narrates because she's amazing. So if you don't know, this book is set in London in the 1940s and we follow a group of characters as the book moves backward through time. So the book starts when World War II is over and all these people are um, recovering several years after. Um, and then it gradually goes back until the point when the war is still on. It makes you realize that it's such a smart way to, to write a novel because if this book was told um, from beginning to end, it would still be an amazing book. But what adds so much to this is that you're seeing these people um, as who they've become and you're not getting an explanation for how they've got to that point which is how you meet a lot of people in your lives like unless you know someone um, from the moment of their birth you don't know everything about them that's made them who they are and so when all these people come into contact with one another and they're trying to figure out why someone's this way you're as in the dark as they are as you would be if you met someone in your everyday life um, so I think that's a, a really great observation and there's just points in this book, like something will happen in the first section and you'll think, oh, okay, that doesn't quite make sense. Um, that's a bit sad. And then something in the later but earlier sections will happen that will make you understand that and make you realise how desperately heartbreaking it truly is. Um, these are amazing characters. I love and adore them. And this is the sort of book that, you know, I'm one of those people who quite often says, you don't really like books about war, books that are set during the war. Um, and this is that, right? This book is set during the Blitz and we follow these characters, um, some of whom are quite involved in the war effort in London. And I love this. And, and it makes me realise what I mean when I say I don't enjoy war books is that I don't enjoy sort of masculine books told on the front lines of battles. I don't enjoy books that are um, 
like violent battle scenes but I enjoy books about the people left behind um the people who sort of um have to carry on with their domestic lives the people who have to shift roles you know gender roles to try and adapt to um the change the war has wrought on their community I think those are really interesting stories um and so if you do then I, I'd really give this one a go it's just amazing and um also I think this is one of the best examples of Sarah Waters um, excellent writing style. The observation she makes about things like people's clothes or mannerisms or um, the way they look or their affectations or their accents are spot on. Um, she'll say things and you'll think oh, that just it's such a perfect description. Um, she, at one point in the novel she describes how, when someone walks out of their front door how the street looks dusty yet sun warmed like when a, a black cat has been sunbathing and you can just see that sheen of dust on the top of their fur. Um, I just thought it was this perfect description of this sort of rather tired yet sunny looking London street. Um, so yeah I love Sarah Waters this is amazing it's one of my favourite novels by her um, and I'd highly recommend it so there's that one. So the next book okay five stars is a really tiny one and that's Mr Salary by Sally Rooney. I'm not really going to talk about what this one's about because it's so little but I loved it and I feel like it feels odd giving a short story five stars for itself but if this was part of a collection and over all of this level I'd 100% give it five stars. If you love Sally Rooney you're going to love this because it's very similar in like tone and theme and style so yeah it, it feels very like her novels um, and I loved it for that so um, this is a great one and also a really cute little edition so there's that one. And the next one I can't talk about much because it's the second book in a series and that is Son of the Shadows by Juliet Marillia. I loved this book so this is the second book in the Seven Waters series and the first book being Daughter of the Forest. I've given them both five stars and Part of me thinks I might love this one more, so I feel like I love Daughter of the Forest more because it's the first one I read and I was so overwhelmed and amazed by how much I loved her and the fact that I found this new author who had loads of books out that I could read and how exciting that was. But I think if I make myself take a step back and just view them as independent books and like choose which one's better, I think this one might be. Um, so these are done in a really interesting way in that each book follows um, a female character in one generation of this family. So we follow um, one female character in the first novel and then in this book we're following um, a female character who is a descendant of the character in the previous novel. Um, and each one of them has a love interest, these are historical fantasies. They're very heavy on their history and the romance and the fantasy isn't really a massive part of it. Like they have allusions to um, the Fey world, but it's not like a really big deal. So I feel like if you enjoy historical romance and you're like fantasy is not really my thing, then I think you'd still love these books. Like it doesn't take over the novel. There's not like um, dragons or like people with like super magical abilities. It's all quite quiet um, and more to do with like prophecy and history than anything else. The reason I think perhaps this book is a stronger book than Daughter of the Forest is because there's a lot of commentary on a woman's role in society. So in the first novel our character becomes so separated from society that really she's not constricted by gender roles. No one's really telling her what to do anymore. Um, whereas in this novel our um, female protagonist is very much constricted by gender roles as is her sister and we watch some awful things that happen to the family because of those gender roles and expectations and as we go throughout the novel um, we realise how much it affects everyone's lives and how devastating those effects can be. Um, I really like the romance, I really like the characters and yeah this was just amazing and I'm going to carry on um, reading these hopefully one a month until I finish the series and I believe there's six books so I've got a few more to go. And then the last book I want to talk about I've done a review on and that is After the Eclipse by Sarah Perry. This is a memoir, I'm not going to talk a lot about it here because I've done a really long review and discussion about true crime um, which I'll link up here somewhere. This is a memoir about the fact that Sarah Perry's mother Crystal was murdered when Sarah Perry was quite young um, and Sarah Perry was in the house and she heard the murder take place um, and the person who committed the crime wasn't arrested for many many years and the majority of this novel is focused on who Crystal was as a person and who she was as a mother um, and it follows Crystal from the moment of her birth until the point of her death um, and then we follow how Sarah deals with the aftermath of losing her mother, how she moves through the world um, and how she views um, crime particularly against women 
um, in reference to the history she has herself. Um, and there is a, a small portion of this novel which is focused on um, the the case um, and solving who did it, but that really isn't what this is focused on. It's not a true crime memoir. It's much more a memoir about um, Sarah's mother crystal. So. This was breathtakingly beautiful. There's no way this won't make it onto my favourite books of the year. And it was the first book I read in the year. But even then, knowing I could still read like however many books, I know it will make it. Like this is not going to get knocked from that spot. So um, I'd highly recommend it um, if you think you can read this one. There's that. So uh, rambles quite a bit there. So <laughs> thanks for watching. Let me know if you've read any of these and what your thoughts were and also feel free to let me know what your favourite book of the month was or if you have any recommendations based on the books that I just spoke about. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.